Okay, welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and also on YouTube if you're watching this video later on over there. For a special stream today, we are going to be doing the War of the Spark set review here with uh, all the colors. As you can see here, we're going to be starting with white. We're going to be doing um, blue, black, red, green, and then multicolored artifacts after that. The set review is going to be just focusing on standard. And I'll be giving each card a letter grade after we kind of discuss the card together here in chat, uh, where it'll be A through F, kind of the US grade letter grade system. Or also cards can get a limited grade. Um, so I'll kind of uh, just kind of read through my grading system here at the beginning of the video. But if you want to see it, you can either put exclamation point grade in the chat if you want to, as I have like right up here. Um, that'll link you to the Google document. Or if you're watching this later on on YouTube in the description, uh, video description, you'll be able to find the grading skill there as well. So an A is a format, format staple among multiple decks. So these are cards in the format that you can expect to play against when you're building new decks. So all my examples are cards from Ravnica Allegiance also. So examples are Hydroid Crisis, Kaya's Wrath, and Mortify. Uh, a B is a defining card in a singular highly played deck or a role player that sees play among multiple decks or a very common sideboard card. So some examples I have there are Gatebreaker Ram or Growth Spiral or Cinder Vines. A C will be a, a powerful card that will see play in fringe decks so maybe like a card that's that's pretty good, but just doesn't really have a great shell around it. So maybe like a Priest of Forgotten Gods type card. A card that is common in a highly played deck, such as Precognitive Perception. Or a fringe sideboard card, such as Collision Colossus. Ds are cards that you will sometimes see in standard play, but they're kind of underpowered in general. Or a janky build-around card. So I have Mesmerizing Benthid, Smothering Tithe, and Mirror March as examples there and an f is a card that really shouldn't see standard play and this is only talking about mythics and rares so these are cards like verity circle amplifier guardian project for example a card here like battlefield promotion this is not going to be a card that we'll see standard play at all but commons and uncommons that aren't going to see any standard play that's the where i'm going to give the limited grade so for example this battlefield promotion right here this is going to be a limited card Okay, so there's our there's our uh, baseline, and so let's kind of get started. So we have uh, a Johnny's Pride Mate is our first card. One in a white for a 2-2 cat soldier. Whenever you gain life, put a 1-1 counter on a Johnny's Pride Mate. So this card's already in standard. It sees a little bit of play in the starter decks that are built around gaining life. Um, so we'll just go ahead and give this card a D. It really probably should just be a limited card, but people do play it because of the starter decks on Arena. But but really probably should just be a limited card. Uh, this first couple we'll be able to go through pretty quickly here. Uh, Battlefield Promotion. We just talked about this one. One in a white instant. Put a 1-1 counter on target creature. That creature gains first strike until end of turn. You gain two life. That is a limited only card same with bond of disciple four and a white sorcery tap all creatures your opponents control creatures you control gain lifelink until end of turn that is a limited card as well bulwark giant five and a white for a three six whenever bulwark giant enters the battlefield you gain five life five life is a lot of life against like mono red and a 3-6 body is really difficult for Mono Red to deal with. But at 6 mana in Standard, you just have a lot better options. So that is also a limited card. Oh, I said <laughs> Disciple, it's Discipline. My bad. Bond of Discipline. That makes more sense. All right, we got some, some more comments to start with here. <laughs> Not a, the most exciting start to the review. But... Um, we have Hawkeye's card here, Charmed Stray. Love this art. Great art. 
Single white for a 1-1 one, one lifelink creature cat. When Charmed Stray enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 one, one counter on each other creature you control named Charmed Stray. Uh, yeah, if, if there's a cat tribal deck, maybe maybe you can you know get your four Charmed Strays in there for your, your cat tribal deck that you want to make. But unfortunately, this is just going to be a limited card. This could be a, a cool card to draft, like see how many you can get it in one draft. If you can get a, a ton of these in a draft and you can make them two twos, three threes, they can they can do stuff. Yeah, it's kind of like the new Sacred Cat. Um, next we have Defiant Strike, a single white mana for an instant target creature gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn and draw a card. This is a reprint and Defiant Strike the first time was a pretty good card in a heroic deck and we have i think we're going to have a heroic deck in the new standard looks like there's going to be a, a like maybe a, a red white heroic deck um like there's there's some there's some cards that we'll kind of talk about later that that go into it and and i think that yeah i think that it could be yeah like feather um feather the redeemed and there's a couple of other cards as well. <laughs> Quasi duplicate cat for the charm stray. So yeah, Defiant Strike. I'm gonna go ahead and maybe are right, looking at our our uh, grade review. Um, so it could be like I'm thinking it could be like a between a, a C and a D. Yeah, it's it's basically only for one archetype, but it's it could be an important part for that one archetype. So. Maybe like a C minus um, in there. Maybe a C. Yeah, tenth district legionnaire. That's going to be a new card. We'll we'll talk about with that. But yeah, defiant. I guess we'll go with the C. So yeah, defiant strike. Um, you know, going to be if if that deck makes it, defiant strike will be a big part of it because having your card cycle and get the triggers is really nice. Divine arrow. Wow, what a. What a story card. Man, so many of these cards in this set. Um, yeah, and that's that's the other thing. Yeah, good good point, Samoa, that draw a card for one mana, that's just that's just fine. You know, if it's just one mana draw a card. You know, you can Defiant Strike is not a not the kind of card that you have to have your own creatures out even. You know, even if they kill your creatures, you can just cycle it on your opponent's creature. You know, it's target creature. So that's that means that the floor of this card is is really high. You know, at at the very least, you're just cycling it for one mana. So Divine Arrow, one in a white instant, deals four damage to target attacking or blocking creature. Um, yeah, not not really seeing any play in standard. This is going to be limited, but just a, a great story card. And man, this this set flavor wise, this set is something else flavor wise. What a what a great story. It's going to be so weird moving from War of the Spark to Corset 2019 in a little bit where we're just going to be like, okay, there's just a bunch of, yeah, like there's just a bunch of kind of random cards thrown together. <laughs> Not much story at all. Or Corset 2020. Uh, <laughs> we're in 2019, but yeah, wrong Corset. My B. All right. Another good limited card for Divine Arrow. <clears throat> uh, Enforcer Griffin. The other thing I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be writing down like the cards that we give like the best ratings to, and and uh, hopefully try to figure out like the the ten best cards in the set or um, for standard, and uh, and then maybe have like a, a list of like the top ten or so. All right, Enforcer Griffin is a four and a white for a three four flyer. That is another just limited card. Not much reason to spend too much time on that. All right, we got a couple of mythics here. Um, the first one is Finale of Glory. X white white for a sorcery. Create X two two white soldier creature tokens with vigilance. If X is ten or more, also create X four four white angel creature tokens with flying and vigilance. So, yeah, it sounds like y'all are liking this card. What are we going to be doing with Finale of Glory in Standard? We ha we already have March of the Multitudes, which 
this does cost one, you know, you have like one less original mana um, requirement than March of the Multitudes. And then you also get two twos instead of one ones. But March of the Multitudes creatures have Life Link, which is really nice. And you have Convoke, so you can play it a lot easier. And you have, and it's an instant. So March has a lot of good things going for it, comparatively to Finale of Glory. Um, <clears throat> Gunny has, Gunny has, Gunny's on the right track. So Sorcery Speed is pretty tough, right? Like, you really want this card at instant speed. We've seen stuff like, um, we've seen these instant speed effects of putting in the tokens before. There's White Sun Zenith. Um, there was uh, the card from Cotton Zatark here. There was X and a White that put, that put them in also uh, that made them soldiers they were one ones but this one makes two twos if we have new to fairy um we can change this from being sorcery speed to instant speed because new to fairy allows you to cast your sorceries instant speed now does that mean that like this kind of card would see play maybe not but maybe maybe some kind of tempo deck with new to fairy that maybe has this as like a sideboard card against control kind of thing. Because, yeah. So mono white aggro. If you're if you're just putting in like a, in a regular like aggro deck that's not able to make a lot of mana or doesn't want the game to go very long, you're looking at like four mana making two two twos, five mana making three two twos. It's not spectacular, but it's not bad. Like, you know, like, two twos are, are real creatures. You know, like, those are each one, like, may require a card kind of thing. And it's not knights. Yeah, if there were knights, that would be really nice for History Banalia for sure. Um, but overall, I think I'm going to go ahead and, and give Finale of Glory a D. You know, like we're we're like thinking of like some some ways where we can maybe play it, but overall, I don't I don't really envision Finale of Glory seeing too much play. Um, but maybe if you're not playing green, you're playing like a Jeskai deck. Um, that's like some people in chat are saying, like maybe like a Jeskai deck with new Teferi that has like Finale of Glory as like a a sideboard card kind of thing. Um, yeah, D. There's no rotation right now. Rotation doesn't happen until the fall. And history will rotate in the fall. but All right, so Finale of Glory is a D. All right, Gideon Blackblade. One white, white, Planeswalker Gideon, four loyalty. As long as it's your turn, Gideon Blackblade is a 4-4 human soldier creature with Indestructible that's still a Planeswalker. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to Gideon Blackblade during your turn. Um... Plus one, up to one other target creature you control gains your choice of Vigilance, Lifelink, or Indestructible until end of turn, and minus six, Exile Target, Non-Land Permanent. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of A's here in chat. First of all, this this set, <laughs> they did put a whole lot of text on all of these cards. <laughs> this set, as far as text goes, there's a lot of text on all these cards. <laughs> um... Yeah, so this card, I, I think this is probably just going to be an A. This card looks really, really nice. So it can, it's this is going to just be the kind of card that can go kind of everywhere. You know, if you're playing like a green-white deck where you can have like Llanowar Elf on turn turn one, Gideon Blackblade on turn two, oh man, that is so much pressure. You're usually want to going to want to be ahead with Gideon Blackblade. It doesn't really protect itself too well. You can give like one of your other creatures Vigilance. Um, to be able to like attack and sit back and protect and block for Gideon. But it but like as far as like the indestructible is only until the end of this turn. So you can't like make some blocker indestructible to help block for Gideon kind of thing. But it's still it's it's such a good threat to have out early in the game. It it's really gonna put you ahead kind of thing. Um I I also feel like this is a great sideboard card for control decks. To be able to play against other control decks in control mirrors, to be able to have an early threat. Control mirrors are pretty weird in that way. Um, in after sideboard games, you usually have like a, a bunch of like 
negates and Dovin's vetoes and cards like that and maybe disdainful strokes and you can just play like a Gideon Blackblade. Um, try to play them underneath other stuff or even on like five mana where you can have like your own counter spell to help protect your Gideon's Black Blade kind of thing. It is it is Kaya's Wrath. It is it does not die to Kaya's Wrath. It doesn't die to Mortify. Um You basically need a planeswalker removal spell and you need it and you need to play your planeswalker removal spell sorcery speed. You can't play it you can't play like um a bedevil on your opponent's turn to try to kill the opponent's Gideon's Black Blade um, because it'll be indestructible at, at that point. Uh, you know, Vras's Contempt answers it. It's hard. It's basically Gideon's Black Blade will always trade up on mana or even. It's it's hard to trade less. I mean, I guess there's the new red and the black card that makes that you can choose somebody to sacrifice a Planeswalker at sorcery speed. Um, but yeah, Vras's Golgari Queen kills it a Gideon. That's a good one. Yeah, Vrasic Golgari Queen works pretty well against Gideon Blackblade. But still, overall, this is a fantastic threat. Um, really hard to, to block and everything, being 4-4 four, four indestructible. Um, and plus, it, that minus 6 exile and non-land permanent is awesome. And that you can do that pretty quickly. Like, the turn you play it, you go up to 5. The next turn, you're at 6. That that is not nothing. Like that exile target non land permanent. That is not nothing. So Gideon Blackblade is going to be the first A of the set. All right, we got Gideon Sacrifice up next. A single white instant. Choose a creature or planeswalker you control. All damage that would be dealt to you this turn. Or all damage that would be dealt to you. Dealt this turn to you and permanents you control is dealt to chosen permanent instead. Okay. Um, so we have we have like a way to make all damage be redirected for one single turn to either a creature or a planeswalker. So if you want, if you like your opponent uh, has a Banefire and um, wants to hit you with a huge bane fire. Well, you can have that that whole thing go to a creature or a planeswalker you control. It doesn't target, so that's good and bad. If it targeted, you know, you could target like whatever thing you want. Um, but then, if your opponent used a removal spell on that thing, then uh, your spell would fizzle. So, like, if you have like two creatures out. You, your opponent can't just use a removal spell in response on whatever thing you would target. Uh, so that's the good part. Hey, Berticus, thank you so much with the Twitch Prime sub. I really do appreciate that, Berticus. Thank you kindly. Um, the bad part about it not targeting is it doesn't work very well with Feather. Like, if it did target, you could maybe use this with Feather the Redeemed. Um or other spells like that, or the other historic kind of heroic kind of cards that we'll be talking about later. Um, yeah, so situational, not horrible. Yeah, uh, yeah, true fire, Jank. Um, somebody said with Lich's Mastery, I like I like the Lich's Mastery is pretty interesting. How you can redirect, you know, like so you don't you don't take damage when you have a Lich's Mastery out, so you don't have to, like, sacrifice stuff. That's pretty interesting. That Yeah, like, that's that's pretty cool. And then, yeah, True Fire, Captain Jank. Um, if, like, you know, you want to protect, prevent, like, a huge explosion against uh, a explosion with Wilderness Reclamation kind of thing. So... Yeah, D plus sounds like a pretty good grade to me. Um, you want to you know kind of build around it with, with that uh, Tajik. Yeah, Tajik is is also another combo with it. Also, actually Tajik, you know because Tajik's pretty good. That's actually yeah Tajik is like really really work really well. Like that that's actually works really well. It's just a fog. With Tajik, like all, all the, uh, um, 
you know, so basically how it works, like Tajik prevents damage to all your other creatures. So you would you choose a separate creature that like the damage would already be, would be prevented to. So it is so it just turns into a white fog, which do you really do you need a white fog in your deck? I don't know, maybe not. But that's that's kind of cool. So yeah, we'll go with, go with a D. You want to build around this card with True Fire Captain? We'll just go with the regular old D. Oh yeah, new Chandra. You can, <laughs> if you have new Chandra in this, they bane fire you for a ton. You put it all on new Chandra that then kills them. <clears throat> All right, uh, Gideon's Triumph. One in a white instant. Target opponent sacrifices a creature that attacked or blocked this turn. If you control Gideon Planeswalker, that player sacrificed two of those creatures instead. This is really not that bad. It's you know, so it's a it's a white edict. Especially if you have a Gideon out, it can be double edict for like the creatures that are attacking you. Remember, you, you can do this before you take damage, right? So they declare attackers, and then you can cast Gideon's tr Triumph afterwards. So, like, if, you know, this is <clears throat> really situational, but, you know, if you need something to answer, like a Carnage Tyrant or anything like that, you know, white, uh, it's basically really, really situational. Uh, white decks don't usually have Edict effects, but white white decks usually have Sweepers, though. Um it's pro I guess it's probably limited. Maybe maybe sees a little bit of play, but probably just a limited card. But it's it's something to keep in mind that, you know, it's it's in the format. Alright, God Eternal Oketra. Three white white legendary creature zombie god. So it's a three six double strike. When you cast a creature spell, create a four four black zombie warrior creature token with vigilance when god Etre eternal oketra dies or is put into exile from the battlefield you may put it into its owner's library third from the top wow every creature you cast you get a 4-4 vigilant token every creature you cast you get a 4-4 so you're saying by turn six you've cast all your creatures yeah you're you're gonna want some kind of like engine to be able to draw some more cards with this i don't know if this like slots into like any existing deck i feel like there would be like new decks kind of built around god eternal oketra i could be seeing i could see something like god eternal oketra here teaming up maybe in like a black white creature deck with like seraph of the scales and and things like that midnight reapers uh you know history banalia is not a creature but you know it's just it would kind of go in that kind of deck and then, like, this is your five-mana slot. And then also on your five-mana slot, you'd have Bantu, which we'll talk about Bantu later on. But Bantu allows is another five-mana god, zombie god, that allows you to sacrifice any number of permanents to, like, draw that many cards. Um, so I could, I could see it kind of fitting in somewhere with, like, that. Um, yeah, Oketra in a Vivian deck, where Vivian allows you to kind of refill your hand. Could be like a Bant deck with Krasis kind of thing. Um, and like the Bant deck, not only Krasis, you can have Fibblethip. <laughs> Fibblethip, explore creatures, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, so... Oh, did, it, did I just miss Equip Supporter? There's a Equip Alert? Man, I just I just don't see these these alerts sometimes, I guess. My bad. Well, thank you. That gets some hype boats in there. Thank you so much for that, uh, for supporting there through Quip. Um, yeah, it could be Abzan Explorer, a Priest of Forgotten Gods deck to get, again, like Priest of Forgotten Gods, Bantu, Oketra. Um, you know, like even though you're making four fours, if you're, you know, you can you can just sacrifice those four fours also to Priest of Forgotten Gods as well. Um, so yeah the new any creature that loots yeah so there's a lot of things to do with this card um 
as far as final final grade goes, I don't think that like I don't think it fits immediately into any deck that we have right now. Like I said, but I think it'll be a card to to build around. I'm not sure if it's an A though. Um, oops, I wanted to move this over here. Sorry, I copy pasted that earlier. I I feel like it could be like a B. Um. Maybe a B plus. Yeah, I like a B plus. Let's go with a B plus. It's it is too much building around for an A. And but I, I don't think it's just like a like I have like B as like Gatebreaker Ram, like a really good card in standard that's played in one archetype. But I could see it being played in a in a couple different archetypes, uh, kind of thing. Like you know, it's it's just a, a strong card that can go in different decks. So I'm I'm gonna go B plus for Oketra. B plus. All right, Grateful Apparition. One in a white for a 1-1 Flying Spirit whenever Grateful Apparition deals combat damage to a player or Planeswalker proliferate. I feel like this is just a limited card. Are you going to want... Like, is proliferate going to be so valuable that you play a 1-1 Flyer for two? Probably not. A couple of people are putting like D. I feel like this is just a limited card. Yeah, like it, it could end up in a deck, I guess. Yeah, and it has to connect. It can't just attack. I think this is just a limited card. Yeah, it does remind me of Night Vale Sprite. How Night Vale Sprite, like 1-2 flyer attack surveil one it does remind me of that um i'm not sure if it's better than that like one one is worse you have to connect which is worse than just attacking um and then and so not only do you have to connect with your grateful apparition but then you had to have other things on the battlefield that have counters on it so that the proliferate actually does something so you'd have to have like creatures with counters or planeswalkers on the battlefield after you connect with your Grateful Apparition. I, I don't really see it seen play. I'm going... I'm going... Uh, just lim Like, that's a limited card. <clears throat> Alright, next is uh, Ignite the Beacon. Uh, four in a white instant. Search your library for up to two Planeswalker cards. Reveal them, put them into your hand, then shuffle your library. I do like playing Planeswalker decks. Uh, I played a lot of legendary legend decks. Um, it is an instant. So people are going some high ratings here with this one. <laughs> Ignite the bacon. With people are saying B for a legendary deck card. So a B would be a a highly a, a card that's played in a singular highly played deck. You know, like Gatebreaker Ram sees play and like you know gates is a highly played uh deck but like a c is a is a card a powerful card that sees plays in fringe decks like breeze of forgotten gods for example um this is taking turn five off but you're drawing two cards it's not like you're taking the turn like if you think about like chemistry's insight draws you two cards for four mana at instant speed but you get two random cards this you get two planeswalker cards that you want like you get to choose what planeswalker cards you want um is this really gonna see play though like would you would you rather play this over just playing another planeswalker like w for five mana wouldn't it be better just to have another copy of a planeswalker in your deck yeah i wish it was two legendary permanents the five mana slot is we've is we're going to kind of discuss is, is we see like with a lot of mythics like the five mana slot is where like basically all of the gods are at um a lot of really good planeswalkers are at with like teferi nicol bolas i mean the five mana slot is really 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 highly um like there's a, a ton of high competition there you go it is really full and i feel like you're just going to want to rather just play another planeswalker here instead of playing a card that would search for planeswalkers um yeah, and you can play Masterminds Acquisition, but 
I'm I'm going with just a, a uh, I'm going with an F honestly with this card. I don't think that this even in even in um, super friend super friends jank. I mean may, maybe a maybe a I guess maybe a D. No, I guess I guess a D. I guess this is like smothering Tithe mirror march kind of thing. If you wanna if you wanna build your deck, build a, a super friends jank around this, you can. But I I think like I mean I play a lot of super friends jank decks and i would rather just play a planeswalker for five mana than play and ignite the bacon so yeah so i'm gonna i would go with, i'm gonna go with d here some people are a lot higher on it a lot of people um yeah a lot of people are saying a lot higher things like like uh b minus b um uh, somebody says first card I'm higher on. This is strictly better than Chemister's Insight and Control. Um, yeah, so a lot of a lot of people a lot of people are higher on it. Um, but we'll see. I think I would rather just have I'm I'm going with the D as just like yeah, just like kind of like the Smothering Tithe Mirror March type thing. Like if you want to build a janky deck around it, you can. All right, Ironclad Crovod, uh, three and a white, two five. Uh, that's it. That's a limited card. Pretty sweet limited card, though. Cool flavor text. But we'll move on. Law Rune Enforcer, white for a one two. One and a, just pay a generic mana and tap it. Tap target creature with converted mana cost two or greater. I mean, that is basically tap any creature. One mana, one two tapper. That could see some standard play. This could be in a, in a white weenie deck where you want like a creature that can attack and everything, but then it also is like your removal spell. Um, it could. I'm gonna go with limited rating, but that that's that's one to to have your mind on. That that one could see a little bit of play. Uh, Luxodon Surgeant, three and a white, three three vigilance, ETB. Other creatures you control gain vigilance. Yes, that is a limited card. Um, makeshift, yeah, this card's real good in limited though. The Lawn Rune Enforcer, Makeshift Battalion, two and a white, three two. Whenever Makeshift Battalion and at least two other creatures attack, put a one one counter on Makeshift Battalion. Uh, yep, that's a limited one. Martyr for the cause, one and a white, two two. Whenever it dies, proliferate. Yeah, this is just going to be a limited card as well. I don't... Hmm. I mean, I guess if you're playing, you know, a Super Friends deck where you have a lot of Planeswalkers out and you want a blocker to be able to chump block and then you proliferate, but you're just going to find better things. Like, you're just going to have, like, Tithe Taker and better things than this card. So, an Aristocrat outlet. Like, so, yeah, if, you have a, if you're playing an Aristocrat sack deck, so it has to be, like... You have to be playing like a an aristocrat sack deck with like you know Bantu or whatever or Priest of Forgotten Gods. Plus, then you also have to have a one one counter theme. And like I don't really know where that one one counter theme. So like a a bant. You're saying a bant proliferate deck. Maybe. I'm so I'm gonna go with the limited rating still, but maybe. You could put it in there. The, the power level is still just pretty low. Parhelion 2. Six white white legendary artifact vehicle. It is a 5-5 five, five flying first strike vigilance. When Parhelion 2 attacks, create two 4-4 four, four white angel creature tokens with flying and vigilance that are attacking. And it has crew 4. So if you get Parhelion 2 on the battlefield, I like the Bora symbol in there. <laughs> Everybody's either saying F or A+. Plus. <laughs> if you get it on the battlefield and you, get to, you have your four power to crew it and you get to attack with it, then you attack with a 5-5 five, five flying first strike vigilant and two other 4-4 four, four flying vigilant creatures. So you're attacking with 13 power by just attacking with this thing. Um, <laughs> this is some pretty amazing jank, but but I mean, yeah, we're talking eight mana to get this thing down, and then you also need like four power also to crew it. 
Um, yeah, one attack. You basically attack with one win. And yeah, some lifelink stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of conditions there. Uh, it would be nice to have some lifelink somewhere in this because of how far behind you're going to be. But at least everything that's attacking is vigilant. And it does how it makes the 4-4 vigilant. Then on defense, you can use one of those 4-4s to crew this thing for defense also. Um, uh, how can you cheat this on the battlefield? So you can cheat this on the battlefield with... Um, uh, Thran Temporal Gateway, four mana artifact that you can pay for and tap it and put a legendary, you know, historic card, so a legendary card onto the battlefield. So you can you can put this Parhelion onto the battlefield with that. Um, so we're going with a, a D with this. This is a this is a janky build around card. If you want to like this, this is something you could you could build around. If you want to build your Thran Temporal Gateway Parhelion deck. Um, Tezzeret could give affinity for your artifacts. Yeah, because it gives affinity to your planeswalkers and artifacts. So yes, yeah, so you could you could Tezzeret have a bunch of artifacts. Maybe with Sahili giving you some extra artifacts and Psy Master Thopterist and Affinity this out. Of course, I mean at that point if you're playing Tezzeret's blue black, so then you need to be Esper. Um Correct. Elis Reborn cannot bring this back, correct. Uh Karn could make it a creature if you have it on the battlefield. The new Karn could. Um, <laughs> Threat of World Gates are notorious for uh, not being the best. No, Boar God does not let you put this onto play. No, you cannot put this into play with the the Boar God, no. Um, yeah, because they're only creatures in, whenever you crew them. It's, it's an artifact, not artifact creature. It's just, it's an artifact. <laughs> um, Gideon can crew this and give it lifelink. That's true. Yeah, Gideon Blackblade could crew this with the crew four. But how are you getting on the battlefield? Who knows? But all right, we're going with the D there. Firesock, thank you so much for the sub there. I really do appreciate that. Coming back here for the second month. Our, our sub goal three out of ten for today now thank you so the grade is d this is a janky build around card if you want you know if you want to build around it it's some jank but it's a it's a sweet card all right pouncing links one in a white two one cat as long as it's your turn it has first strike it's awesome for the cat tribal deck uh, this is a limited card though just going with a limited rating there <laughs> Real Rankler also with the sub. Thank you so much, Real Rankler. Um, fourth sub of the day. All right, Prison Realm. Two and a white enchantment. Whenever Prison Realm enters the battlefield, exile target creature or planeswalker and opponent controls until Prison Realm leaves the battlefield. And whenever it enters the battlefield, scry one. Not a bad card. So I feel like this is kind of similar to Conclave Tribunal. Uh, where Conclave Tribunal can hit anything, and you can use it for, you can, you know, convoke it out. But Prison Realm at least always costs three. Um, so that's that's good that, like, if you're not really playing creatures, you know, if you're like a, a, if you were like a white control deck that wasn't really playing creatures, you kind of had to have, like, Mortify kind of stuff. Like, the three mana removal sp spells in white were just basically not um, existent. You'd had to, you know... Like I said, play another color. Uh, so this gives us something. If you want to be like a white prison deck uh, kind of thing. You want to be like a, yeah, like a Bant control deck. Yeah, maybe like this is this is something. Scry 1 is not is not terrible. That's not, that's not terrible. Yeah, the Scry 1 is, that's nice. You know, that, that's, a, that's a nice addition there. Uh, do you really want enchantment removal these days with like Mortifies being played? You know, debatable. Um, but you know, getting getting enchantment removal did uh, increase in value quite a bit with Hydroid Crisis uh, being a highly played card because you know you just get to exile it; it doesn't really come back, kind of thing. Um, I I feel like this is this is a C here. This is like a, a card that could just be like a could see a little bit of play. Um, you know, maybe a fringe sideboard card or maybe a, a you know a common card. You know, I could see this being on like your precognitive perception collision colossus kind of rating maybe a little lower though i could go like c minus 
C minus. Yeah, if it had flash, that would be really nice. But Baffling End and Seal Away, you know, had some restrictions. You know, Seal Away has to only get the tapped creatures. Baffling End um, can only get creatures CMC3 or less. So this has, like, no restrictions like that. It gets any creature. And it also gets Planeswalkers, too, which getting Planeswalkers is probably going to be really important in our next set. Um, we can, yeah, we can envision this seeing some some play in some decks. So let's go with this C to C minus right around there. There's just a lot of good removal in standard, though. Rally of Wings. One in a white instant. Untap all creatures you control. Creatures you control with flying gain plus two, plus two until end of turn. That looks like a limited card. I don't think that'll be. Let's see, yeah, this this has like potential for a B maybe. That's that's yeah. I guess it it has, it's like a C to C minus with some upside. Yeah, there we go. There we go. All right, Ravnica at war, three and a white sorcery exile all multicolored permanents. Hmm. Oh, I didn't even realize it says, like, does this, will this card say Spotlight Act 1 on it? Maybe it will. This mtgstory.com. <clears throat> so y'all are thinking this is going to be, see, play in a lot of sideboards? I could certainly see that. If, I mean, it's the kind of card that's, like, a good, that, like, may not be played right away. Like, right away, you probably don't just put Ravnico at war in your deck or maybe even in your sideboards. But depending on how the metagame shapes up, if it does turn out to be a lot of multicolored permanents, then Ravnica War is a good kind of check on those kind of things. If there are, like, if, you know, like a Nicol Bolas Dragon God deck with um, a lot of other multicolored permanents, such as uh, a Disinformation Campaign and, and other things, if that turns out to be a, a pretty big part like a pretty big deck like in the metagame ravnica at war could be a, a nice card to fight it dual lands no lands are colorless this does not hit lands no um if if niv mizzet uh becomes part of the metagame for example niv mizzet uh is the is a five mana card niv mizzet reborn five mana card that cares about having uh multicolored cards you know it's a, like a, it's a guilds matter kind of card uh, if that becomes a big part of the metagame. Ravnica War could be a, a good card for that. Um, so basically, yeah, like right now we have mono blue, mono white, mono red. Even in like, if you think about like right now, uh, you know, against like Gates, you don't really want it. Even against like Asper Control, you can get rid of Teferi, but, you know, not really there. If you're playing against Sultai, you get Krasis and Hostage Taker. It doesn't really have a spot right now in like the current metagame but in upcoming metagame it's a it's a nice um card to protect against stuff like if we start seeing a whole lot of like the new teferis and domeries um and like those kind of planeswalkers um and and things this could see some some sideboard play um right now i'm going with like a fringe sideboard card is like a c but it does have the ability to move up to like a B is like a, a more highly played sideboard card and maybe even main deck at times. Um, so I think I think that's where I'm at right now. C for now, but it has has the ability to move up depending on what happens uh, in our next metagame. It's 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 kind of a, a good hedge um, to having cards like the new Nickel Bulls and other multicolor Planeswalkers being too powerful. Yeah, so it could be the sideboard card, um, depending on how the metagame shapes up. All right, Rising Populous, two and a white, two, two. Whenever another creature or planeswalker you control dies, put a 1-1 one -one counter on Rising Populous. So if there's like a way you can sacrifice a bunch of creatures... And you continue to have more creatures come back. You can really grow this thing to be pretty big. That doesn't seem like it doesn't seem like it'll likely happen. Um, this, yeah, you could, I guess, build around this thing. Maybe like a D minus. I think it's it's similar to a Johnny's Pride Mate uh, kind of thing. D minus 
Uh, really just kind of a limited card. Like, this is, it's very unlikely that this will ever do anything, but... Yeah. Single combat. Three white-white sorcery. Each creature... Each player... Sorry, each player chooses a creature or planeswalker they control, then sacrifices the rest. Players can't cast creature or planeswalker spells until the end of your next turn. This has got to be an F, right? Like, what, what are we doing with single combat? Um, I guess, like, it's, it's kind of like a sweeper, but the thing is, is, like, if you got to choose... Um, it would be a whole lot better, but you don't get to choose. Like the opponent gets to choose which creature they want to keep and which planeswalker they want to keep. <laughs> yeah. It's a sweeper. They keep the best thing. Um, what was that sweeper in magic origins that saw a whole lot of play? And you got to choose with that one, right? Um, that, that card is just right on the tip of my tongue. That one, I can't I can't think of what I can't I can't think of that that card from Magic Origins that saw a lot of play in standard. Tragic arrogance. There you go. Tragic arrogance. That's the card that I'm thinking of. T Money List. Welcome back. Thanks for that Twitch Prime sub. Tragic Arrog arrogance. You got to pick the cards, right? I'm not misremembering that, right? Yeah. This this is probably great in EDH. Uh, single combat is. That is true that they are, they do not get to, that, I guess I'm kind of, I was kind of just glancing over that other um, clause, but that is true that you get to be the first person to rebuild. So you cast this on your turn, and then the next person, they don't get to rebuild their creatures or planeswalkers for their next turn, and then it goes back to you, then you get to do that, then you get to rebuild. I don't know. That's, that's, that's a commander thing. Hey, Journey's guy. Yeah, it's until the end of your next turn. So not not the end of this turn that you cast your sorcery on. So you, you cast the single combat, then it goes to them, then they cannot play creatures or planeswalkers, and then it goes to you, then you get to play stuff. Oh, players can't. Oh, not even just opponents, so you can't either. You can't cast it either? Okay, yeah. All right, well, this is an F. <laughs> That's an F. All right. Sunblade Angel, five and a white, three, three, flying, first strike, vigilance, lifelink. That's a lot of keywords. I should call this keyword angel. Uh, that's just a limited card, though. Six mana, you can be doing a lot better things than standard. All right. Um, next card is Teo, the shield mage. Two and a white for five loyalty planeswalker. Uh, you have Hexproof is the static ability, and you can minus two to make an O3 white wall creature token with Defender. So this is... All right, so a normal deck will not want to play this card. Like You have Hexproof. If you're really into that, you can just play Shalai for one more mana, and it's just a lot better card. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know why it's an O3 also. Yeah, it could, it, they could definitely make O5. So if you're playing the like a defender deck with Arcades and everything, if you want to make your Arcade, Arcades defender deck, maybe you can play this Teo. I think that's about the only way. Yeah, for a janky Arcades deck, that's about the only way you can play this card. I don't think even a side... I don't think this is a, a very good sideboard card even. Even against like Mono Red as like a sideboard card. I think there's just a better things you can be doing than Teo. Like I think I'd rather have Shalai. I mean, I guess this does cost one less mana, but it's it's really easy to kill Teo. Uh, if you make your defender right away, then it's at th three loyalty. They can just lightning strike the Teo, and then you don't have hexproof anymore. That's just not even very good against Red. I think so. Proliferate. Yeah, I think basically for a janky walls deck. Is about all you can play this deck in. So, Janky Walls deck with Arcades. 
um, you know, a, a D, D minus. It's not even like the card you're building around, so like a D minus. <clears throat> All right, so Teo's Light Shield. Two and a white, O3. Oh, when Teo's Light Shield enters the battlefield, put a 1 1 counter on target creature you control. That's just going to be a limited card. Tomique, Distinguished Advocist. Adv Advocist? That doesn't seem like a real word. Advocist? Or at least that it would be spelled like that. At least it doesn't it doesn't look like it's spelled correctly or something. I don't know. Maybe it is. I mean, I'm sure it is, but it's it's just it looks weird. <laughs> avocado ist. Somebody who really likes avocado. That's an avocist. Anyway, it's a a uh, white white for a 2-3 flying creature lands on the battlefield and land cards and graveyards can't be the target of spells or abilities your opponents control. Your opponents can't play land cards from graveyards. So the the abilities on this card are kind of weird in standard. You know, it's definitely built with older formats in mind. For standard, like not letting your opponents play land cards from the graveyard. I mean, that could matter with the Crucible kind of thing. It, it's not going to matter hardly ever. Um, the lands on the battlefield can't be the targets of spells or abilities you, you control, your opponent's control. That could matter um, at times. Like, that, you know, you could stop a Field of Ruin. You can stop, uh, like, the Casualty of War card that destroys a land, um, Star of Extinction, um, that kind of stuff. But... So basically, kind of ignoring that that those abilities exist, even though they can maybe do something at times, it's still not a bad card. White, white, two, three, flying for two. That that's a a pretty decent card. You know, it doesn't die to shock. It can help pressure planeswalkers, which we're you know if we have like a decent amount of planeswalkers in the set, like this is a good card to pressure planeswalkers of like the having evasion early, not dying to shock pretty decent body i could i could certainly see like white weenie playing this or just other um kind of aggro decks or mid-rangey decks like you know the, like the aketra maybe an aketra kind of deck playing this it is really good at with legends decks at enabling legendary instants and sorceries that's definitely something there um it's really good with a johnny the our regular our four mana johnny that we have in standard right now um, a Johnny adversary tyrants of a Johnny pumping this up, like pumping up this flyer is really nice or getting it back, uh, you know, getting back another flying threat, like with the minus ability. I think this works really well with a Johnny. Um, yeah, and it does survive the minus two, minus two spell. I think this is, this could be an important card for the format of pressuring. Like we have a lot of these three mana planeswalkers, like a card that can pressure them. Uh, I think this, this could be important. Um, I think I'm not sure if it's it's quite a B though. I'm not sure if it's like on growth spiral range, but maybe maybe like a B minus, C plus to B minus, like around there. It is legendary though. Yes, yeah, so you're not going to be playing four of them. So I think I'm I'm around there. Um, Adanto does pressure at three power, but Adanto Adanto also has its downsides. Like you know, it gets blocked very easily. This doesn't get blocked. Adanto like. You know, whenever it gets shocked, you have to pay for life kind of thing. This doesn't die to shock. Um, you know, like, they they have their pluses and minuses. White, white as a mana cost is also kind of tough. Maybe, like, C+. Plus. White, white as a mana cost is tough also. Um, but, yeah, I think I think this, this deck... Or, sorry, this card could kind of surprise some people at just the rate that it has. White, white, 2, 3, flying. Even kind of ignoring the rest of it. I feel like that could that can uh, see some pretty decent play. Hey, what's up, McCarty? That is true. This is good with the new Nissa that makes your lands creatures, because then they can't target your lands that are creatures. That's true. I didn't think of that. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. All right, topple the statue. Two and a white instant tap target permanent. If it's an artifact, destroy it, draw a card. So I feel like this is basically 
the only like this could be a cyborg card if artifact decks get pretty big where it can be just um destroy target artifact draw card for three mana it doesn't kill enchantments also um that is very narrow there's just not a lot of artifacts these days so like right now it's just a limited card but it could potentially be a cyborg card if artifacts get pretty big uh right now in standard that that's not likely to happen but maybe like with rotation if there's another artifact block or you know more artifact matter stuff hey what's up zerf um but I think that's basically where you'll see this card. Uh, a sideboard destroying artifact draw a card kind of thing. Uh, for now, limited. Um, at worst, you can, you know, tap a land. Up, upkeep, yeah, rich and import a land. <laughs> upkeep, tap your land, draw a card. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so for now, limited, but does have some potential being a fringe sideboard card. Trusted Pegasus. Two and a white, two, two flying. When Trusted Pegasus attacks, target attacking creature without flying gains flying until end of turn. This is a limited card here. The Wanderer. Three and a white for a five loyalty planeswalker. Do you know what I just realized about this card? That. <laughs> yeah, Trusted Pegasus is best boy, though, yeah. Great, yeah. Very, very sad story with the Pegasus and everything. Do you know I just, I just realized with this card, I never, I didn't realize this before, that it doesn't say Legendary Planeswalker, like, Dash Wanderer. Like, there's no Planeswalker type here. You know, like, basically all the Planeswalkers always have the, the type. You know, this is Planeswalker Teo. This does not say anything there. That's kind of weird. I guess because we don't really know who this Wanderer is, I suppose. Uh, I guess let's let's read the card, though. So it's three and a white, five loyalty. Prevent all non-combat damage that would be dealt to you and other permanents you control. And then minus two, exile target creature with power four or greater. Yeah, the Wanderer is anonymous. It's mysteries. A lot of, Yeah, it looks like a lot of people are thinking it's Elspeth. Um... We are going to need more white planeswalkers now. With with Gideon dying and Elspeth di already died, we don't really have white planeswalkers anymore. You know, we have like a Johnny who, you know, there's like a green white Johnny even in the set. And then we have what, like this Wanderer character that's new and this Teo character. Um, yeah, I'm not talking about like really multicolor. Like Teferi's always been blue white. We don't have like just just regular like j just only white planeswalker too much um, that we're gonna have moving forward. Um, so, what kind of what are we gonna play with this card? Like, what are we gonna do with this card? So you're saying like, is it good with Shalai? I mean, it would it is good with Shalai against red decks, you know, against decks that are just dealing damage. Um, it's good there. Uh, it is good against, you know, getting, you, you can get multiple removal spells against like a, a, a green stompy deck with large creatures kind of thing. Um, I can't really, it's, it's pretty hard to imagine actually playing this card over other four mana cards in standard though. So this is a, a combo with Command the Dreadhorde. Okay, I guess I don't I don't know that combo too well. Let's command the Dreadhorde to... Oh, yes. Yeah, you can put all these in, into graveyards and then it deals damage to you equal to the, that CMC. Okay, so if you want... If, yeah, okay. So if you want your com command the Dreadhorde, Wander... I mean, so you have to have... So you have to have the Wander in play. You have to untap with it. It has to, like, not die. And then you have to have your six mana card... Yeah, I mean that that could happen. So it does so if you're playing like Tajik, Tajik prevents the non combat damage to everything else, and this would prevent the non combat damage to the Tajik. Um but yeah, it does kind of work with Shalai. It's basically like good against red decks with that. And you have to have other stuff. It's not like 
very good on its own because if it just on its own they just kill the wanderer and then and then kill you kind of thing you could go wanderer plus star of extinction there you go yeah wanderer plus yeah when you're doing like your own things uh there's the the new thing like where all creatures deal damage equal to their power to themselves you can you know play the wanderer with that um it it is the kind of thing that it doesn't do very much on its own you but it can help turn on it is a good enabler for like all that kind of janky stuff yeah solar blaze deafening clarion um So I think maybe go with like a D here. I don't I don't think you're playing this too much unless you're just unless you're building your your janky deck that does other stuff like that. Okay, D plus. I'm, I'm good. I'm I'm good with going with a D plus. I'm I'm good with that. I'm good with moving it to a D plus because it is possible that that with command the dread horde that could be a thing. That could certainly be a thing. That with command the dread horde. And then it does have, you know, like, it is annoying for, like, red decks. You know, it does just have, like, you know, it does just have abilities against, you know, just normal. It is, like, annoying against red decks that they have to, like, you know, use their burn spells on this before the burn spells deal damage to you. It can just exile, a cre you know, it can just be a four mana exile removal spell. You know, a big, like, Hydrocrasis or whatever. You can just play it on four, exile Hydrocrasis, and you have, like, this Wanderer just chilling that to maybe exile something else later. Um... Uh, Phoenix, it won't exile, but it could exile, like, Drake's. Um, no, you, you can Lightning Strike this. This prevents the damage to you and other permanents, but does not prevent the damage to it. So you can Lightning Strike the Wanderer kind of thing. So it does shut down the, the Sweepers from Gates. It is very good against Gates. It does exile Gatebreaker Ram and shut down Gates Ablaze. It is awesome against Gates. This is this is a really good cyborg card against gates. That is true. It is basically very good against everything in gates. Um, yeah, that is that is awesome against gates. So, all right, C minus. Y'all y'all are talking me up. I don't think I want to go up to C yet, but C minus. Yeah, so far our our only A card has been Gideon Blackblade so far. The next best card in white was Oketra at B+. Um, Wanderer Strike, four and a white, exile target creature, then proliferate. That's a good card in limited. But that's that's it. That's a limited card. And then Wars Creature, one and a white, uh, for a 1-3 flying, five and a white, tap other creatures you control, get plus one, plus one until end of turn. That's also a limited card. All right, so our, our top cards in white that we had were Gideon Blackblade at an A and God Eternal Oketra at a B plus. Um, overall, white seemed pretty weak, though, just in general. That was kind of about it. Um, to me, this thinking like a, a B minus um yeah so yeah can you see Gideon again yep absolutely so <laughs> Parhelion's the best card in the set hands down we have some some decent cyborg cards uh it doesn't seem like white is where like the power of the set is we do know that a lot of the power in the set is going to be with the multicolor cards um because there, there's just so many of those uh, and so a lot of our limited cards are kind of are just kind of within the the single color um, colors here. So we're gonna see a lot of a lot of limited cards in these single colors. But all right, so that is uh, that is the standard set review for War of the Spark for white. That is our first color that we're going to be doing as you see here we're going to be moving on to blue then black then red the green then the multicolor after this all right so if you're watching this video later on on youtube i hope you hit the subscribe button over there hope you enjoyed our first part of our set review here uh, but thanks for watching and i will see you for the next video for blue here in a minute